So uh, the first thing I want to talk about today in this guide to navigating your internet browsers is actually the browser itself that you might be using. So let's first talk about what an internet browser is. Again, I know this is very, very, uh, very simple stuff, but I still want to go over this. So an internet browser is a program on your computer that allows you to visit websites, put simply. Your browser is the probably the most important program on your computer um, if you're using a computer. If you're using a phone mostly or a tablet mostly, um, you probably will use a web browser less than if you use a computer. Um, we mostly use apps to perform the kind of same functionality on phones and tablets as we do on computers. But on a computer, your internet browser is pretty much how you do almost anything you're gonna do. So it's super important to understand um, the best ways to use it, how to keep it safe, how to keep it fast and all those things. So I first wanna start by going over what factors you should consider when choosing a browser. Now you probably just, you might just use the browser that came like pre-equipped on your device, whether that be your computer or tablet. Um, that might mean that you use Microsoft Edge or Explorer if you use a Windows computer. It might mean that you use Safari if you use Apple products. Um, but there is the option to download other browsers and use them. So what should you consider when you're choosing a browser? First things first is you should always consider security. A reliable browser prevents viruses and malware from getting on your computer. And a good browser ensures your personal privacy and security and provides transparency when browsing online. Those things are key. The next thing you should probably consider is speed. Uh, the fastest internet browsers will allow you to open websites quicker and more efficiently and allow you to load multiple websites and tabs at once. And this is especially important now as websites themselves become more complicated. Um, we do really need a really strong and fast browser in order to be able to navigate a lot of the websites that exist these days. Um, let's see. Another thing you should consider is syncing. So if you're using multiple devices, say your smartphone and your computer, this is not something you have to consider, but something you may want to consider. Um, synchronizing allows you to sync things like your search history and browsing history and books, marks and passwords and preferences to a single account and then tie those across multiple devices. So you never have to worry about, you know, being on uh, your smartphone and you're trying to figure out what your password was to that account and you know that it's saved on your computer but you can't get it, that sort of thing. And then uh, one of the last things is compatibility and this is compatibility with sites and browser extensions. So when I say compatibility with websites, I mean the kind of program that websites are running on. Sometimes certain browsers will not be compatible with those and will not be able to properly access certain websites. I've seen it happen across the board from using Safari to things, for things to Firefox to Chrome. So it happens from time to time. So the compatibility of that, but also the compatibility of browser extensions, if that's something you're interested in. And browser extensions, just for your information, are small programs used to customize your internet browser. So if you've ever heard of anything like ad blockers or you've heard of the app Grammarly, which helps um, helps you, you with your grammar as you're typing emails and things on the internet, uh, those are all browser extensions. So they're little things that you can add just to add more functionality to your internet browser. And then the other thing is device compatibility. So beyond just compatibility with the websites you're visiting and the programs uh, like extensions on the browser, it's also about the compatibility with your device. Device compatibility is the ability to transfer your data from uh, one device to another. For example, creating that Chrome account, which you were to sign into anywhere. And then also the compatibility between saying if you're using Safari because you have a Mac computer, but you have an Android phone and you can't get Safari on an Android phone, that's going to be a problem with compatibility. So thinking about those types of things. So given these factors, let's talk about choosing a browser. Now we're going to go through and we're going to talk about kind of the, the main four that I'd call them right now. There are other browsers out there to consider. So if you do have any questions about that, I can definitely answer them at the end. Uh, but we're going to be mostly focused on Google Chrome, 
Mozilla Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge. So we'll talk a bit about each. So first of all, Google Chrome uh, was designed to be one of the fastest web browsers, and it is quite fast. Chrome keeps you safe with its built-in malware protection, so it is also one of the safest browsers out there. It also comes with great syncing capabilities across devices. You can sync across devices with a single account, which is a Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you have a Google account, or if you have any sort of Google Drive account or YouTube account, you also generally have a Google account that you can use to sync across devices, which I think a lot of people do have. Uh, it is, however, a bit less energy efficient than some of the other options we're going to look at because it is more powerful. It also has the most compatibility with things like extensions and websites running different programs. Microsoft Edge is Microsoft's browser. It's built actually on the Chromium baseline. So it is the same as Chrome in terms of its base structure, it makes it more compatible with all of Chrome's extensions and sites. And because Google itself owns Chrome is such a powerhouse, so many websites are built in its favor. Uh, so it being built, Microsoft Edge being built on the Chromium baseline is a plus for it because it means it is more compatible with more things. Microsoft Edge is faster than its predecessor, Internet Explorer. And it's actually, I think, at this point, among the fastest of these browsers that we're going to talk about. It is more user friendly than Explorer. So if you had used Explorer in the past with previous um, Windows computers and have abandoned it for something else, um, this new version uh, is definitely more user friendly and more energy efficient. So if you kind of jump ship, might consider coming back to Microsoft's internet browser. And the new Edge has superior privacy and security features. So it is quite a safe and secure browser to use. Next one is Firefox. It is very fast. Um, I think just a bit, I think at this point, Edge is just a bit faster than it, but it is still very fast. Uh, the newest version has more security than before. I do believe that uh, Firefox would at this point be considered the most secure of these four, um, based on what I've been reading lately. Uh, and they do prioritize transparency and privacy um, above others, especially above someone like uh, a company like Chrome and, and Google, who does obviously do a lot of data mining, stuff like that. It is prioritizing that. It does not use Chromium, so it's not on the Google uh, baseline, making it a good choice if you don't want to use Google. So if you're an anti-Google person, Firefox is, is a good option for you. There's also a lot of room for customization with extensions. However, because it's not on the Chromium baseline, this means that it probably has a bit less compatibility than Chrome or Edge, which are on that baseline, and that is probably the most popular one and what a lot of websites are built uh, basically in service of. And then we have Safari, which is Apple's built-in internet browser. It's fast. It's not as fast as the others, though. And it's secure and it has good privacy control. And there's a decent amount of transparency, it being Apple, which really prioritized privacy and transparency in that matter. Um, but it doesn't have as much customization as the other browsers with extensions and plugins. Uh, it, it is a bit more energy efficient, especially if you're running a Mac computer because it's built for that computer. However, it's it's just not as fast or as as, as compatible as, as the others. It's a fine one if you're just using basic browsing, but sometimes you might find that certain websites don't work as well or really at all with Safari. Uh, there are some gaps in it so to be aware of. So let's talk about which of the categories we talked about at the front each of these browsers kind of wins at. So which browser is the fastest? Uh, I'd say it's Edge right now, uh, but Chrome is also very close, uh, with Firefox also close behind. So really this like difference is pretty marginal unless you're doing like really, going to like really, really heavy websites uh, that are using up a lot of data. Um, you probably won't notice this, but it kind of at this point is Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and, and, and so on from there, all very fast and, and will work just as fine. Which browser is the most secure at this point in time? It is Firefox. And just to say this changes all the time because browsers are being updated and changed all the time. But right now it is Firefox, especially with their uh, focus on privacy. So when we talk about security, 
that might be a bit different than our focus on privacy. Um, security, we're talking more about its uh, risk of being hacked or you know being exposed to malware, but privacy is another matter uh, and is probably more up to the company itself and what practices it uses in terms of um, storing and using users' data. Which browser is the most energy efficient? That would be uh, Microsoft Edge. Which is the best for syncing? That's going to be Google Chrome, as I said, with that Gmail or Google account really easy to sync across all devices and it's available on all, on all devices and then which one is the best for compatibility once again that is google chrome all right a few things too before we jump in to going through the actual browser some tips to keep your browser faster so if you're finding that your browser is lagging it's performing slowly loading websites slowly or any of that or you find when you're on the internet your computer is overheating um, and then and the browser is running down. A few things you can do to make sure that it runs faster and more efficiently. Always make sure your browser is up to date. If you ever get one of those pop-ups that says, you know, your browser needs to be updated or there's an update available, uh, always click update. And if you can turn on automated, automatic updates for it, that one only ensures that it is faster. It also will ensure the safety and security of it because a lot of the time the updates that are made to programs on our computers, phones, and tablets are for the sole purpose of updating security protocol. So always make sure you update those things soon as updates become available. Clear your browsing data. You can do this by going into your history menu and click browse, clear browse data. We'll go over how to do this, but uh, you should clear your browser data often and not if not just your browser data, definitely your cookies, uh, which we'll talk about because those can really slow down uh, how your computer runs. And often I find sometimes I'll visit a website and it just absolutely won't load for me and I'll cl clear the cookies for that website and then it works just fine. So it can cause some other issues too if you don't clear these things out every once in a while. Disable unused extensions, add-ons, and plugins. Again, we're going to talk a bit about how you get extensions, but if you're not, find yourself you're not using a certain extension that you downloaded a lot, you should offload it just to keep that speed up. And always minimize the amount of windows and tabs you have open at once. I am guilty as um, for sure. I often have about 20 tabs open at a time, but I try to avoid that because that can really slow down the browser as well. <clears throat> 